Well, hey, EVTV, here's Anna Klopenborg with that weekly EVTV Amsterdam update. Uh, this week, we've uh, had a hard time to keep building as there's many projects up in the air and we are getting ready for that big move I've been talking about for a while. Uh, in the last two weeks, the old uh, shed that was in the location where our new warehouse will be has been torn down. The ground has been plowed, the uh, new concrete has been poured, and all the preparations for the new warehouse that will be built next week in one week's time uh, have been made. Uh, there's a lot of uh, contract negotiation going on, a lot of uh, sourcing my heaters for the next cold winter, and uh, getting ready for all that good stuff that is the uh, mild cardiac arrest, which moving always entails. Uh, then again, we're very excited because having a lot of new space is going to be needed. There's uh, a lot of projects coming up. A lot of folks want to come help us do the building. And right now, as you can see in our little space, the original garage where it all started, uh, we just don't have any room anymore. Uh, every day starts with putting three vehicles out so we can work on vehicle number four. Uh, Raymond's got his corner to work. I've got my uh, little office upstairs. But even if we had guys wanting to help us out, um, there's no real space for you to work, guys. So um, we really need that move, and we're very excited that it's actually happening. That said, what else was happening this week? Well, um, one of the big new projects that we are hopefully going to do is a great a Volvo 240 conversion uh, possibly for uh, Mr. Libers from Fastned. Fastned is a company I've talked about before. Uh, they have uh, 200 concessions for uh, fast charge stations all along the Dutch highways. 200 stations at uh, strategic locations where normal gas stations are already there uh, and they'll have their separate parking slip. Uh, if you are already uh, active, I'll show you what they look like again. Uh, so they have their second, uh, separate slip uh, in these uh, areas where normal gas stations are, and they offer uh, three different standards of charging. It's a big ABB-made box that offers both a Chedimo plug, a Type 2 plug, and I believe uh, um, a normal Shuko plug, if that is the case. Um, maybe it's just Type 2 and Chedimo. I'll check it out online, and I'll put it up left or right wherever uh, I've got some space to put that graphic. Anyways, Bart Lubbers is one of the original founders uh, and organizers of uh, Fastned. And of course, uh, being the director of a company that is introducing fast charging as a national grid network here in Holland, he feels that he also should be driving electric himself. Now, he's no stranger to driving electric. He drove uh, a electric um, converted Lotus done by ECE cars, one of the first road legal uh, made in Holland, converted in Holland, uh, electric cars that were around back in the day. His dad, our former prime minister, Ruud Lubbers, uh, drove uh, one of their converted golf cars, which is uh, uh, not a golf cart as in uh, the sport golf, but uh, golf as in the Volkswagen Golf, which is a very popular Volkswagen model here in Holland. And it got about a good 150 kilometer, you know, slightly under 100 mile range already back in the day. Because uh, Mr. Lubbers, of course, he'd be able to get a Tesla. And even though it doesn't have Chedimo standard charging, he'd be able to do type 2 charging. But he says that it is simply, um, you know, the Tesla is not really for him. Uh, it is a, a very swanky car, and some people like their cars, uh, um, you know, with a little bit more character, a little more history, or some different lines, you know. Uh, um, and so the modern offering of Tesla or BMW are not for him. The, the wife doesn't like the looks of a Prius or a Leaf, um, and they've always actually been uh, Volvo drivers, what having a quite, uh, you know, a sizable family and uh, needing to get the kids in the car and the groceries and the dog. Uh, they'd like to have a car that's uh, more practical and suits their tastes. So, uh, using our conversion components, it's basically you choose the car and we'll make it roll. And uh, in this case, we're going to be offering a complete set and conversion for a Volvo 240 and hopefully getting him out on the road. Now, part of what he wants would be Chedimo charging. So, uh, as part of our offering, we will have to uh, see if we can make uh, the car Chedimo ready. 
I believe from what I've been sniffing around on the webs that uh, uh, that should actually be quite possible. And I have slightly more confidence in that we'll be able to uh, make a fitting proposition for Chidemo charging, uh, enabled charging uh, in uh, a conversion we do, because we have Celso Mania of Portugal coming over to Amsterdam. Our shout out last week had the intended effect <laughs> and Celso and I got in contact this week and uh, Celso will be coming over from the 15th till the 29th of October. So I will have his uh, uh, wisdom and talented fingers with the batteries and the wiring here uh, for the two weeks prior to uh, us getting this uh, Jeep road legal tested. So that's gonna be a great boon uh, to us while uh, I'm you know, overseeing the move. Uh, Celso will be taking charge of a lot of the wiring and final fitment uh, uh, for components, getting this car uh, road legal and getting the GevQ all set up to go. And uh, so that's a big relief. But at the same time, I will be picking his brain and through his Portuguese connection, uh, talking to Paulo Almeida and seeing what we can get done on a um, Chidemo unit, making a conversion that we make a Chidemo charging ready. Then uh, as a backup, he will also have a type two plug, probably at first hooked up to a single 3.3 kilowatt uh, charger and uh, uh, maybe at some point giving him the full type two 20 kilowatt AC option uh, as well for when he's more in cities and not on the move. So good projects and at the same time, good movement on our uh, shop uh, and business development front. What else uh, was coming in this week? Well, I am sitting next to some beautiful 180 watt panels. Thank you, Richard Flenshi, for uh, packing them up beautifully. And uh, we now have a airbridge in effect. I've talked about the airbridge before, but it's never really worked out. It's always uh, supposedly it's supposed to be affordable and a week. And uh, I always ended up with this gigantic bill <laughs> and, and it would take like two and a half weeks trying to get something through customs or something would sit in Chicago for like three weeks with pilots saying, Eh, that box, nah, <laughs> I'll leave it. So um, it never really worked out as it was. Uh, here I was hopefully offering the customers a quick, uh, a quick to and fro for an acceptable amount of money and uh, things would end up taking a lot of time, costing a lot of money, and I would always kind of shy away from offering people uh, um, this option even. But now we seem to have the whole UPS uh, thing down. Uh, um, I have some direct uh, account manager contact here on the Dutch side. Uh, UPS has uh, so far not screwed up things on the American side. And that means for all our viewers out there that in addition to the stuff that we try and keep in stock, uh, you know, stuff like the, um, the JLDs, the, the fuses, couple of the motors, but, you know, I mean, Jack's amazing knack for uh, finding uh, great EV components means that the, by now the lineup is so big, I'm not quite able to either keep up in tempo or keep up in volume. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want to disappoint people when they need stuff, you know, next week or two weeks from now. With the Airbridge, we'll be able to get you, you know, something that I don't have delivered to your door uh, probably in about two weeks' time, counting uh, the week it would take to get over here, repacked and paid, and uh, out to you. That's a lot quicker than the six to eight weeks that it would be uh, uh, when things get packed into one of our containers as they come uh, in bulk from uh, Cape Girardeau over to Amsterdam. These 180 watt uh, panels being an example, uh, they're all going to uh, one of EVTV Amsterdam's best new customers. He's been at it for a while actually. This is a guy that runs basically uh, 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 the, um, the front end of a shipyard where they uh, uh, supply and uh, do a lot of stuff for many of the you know, mid -size, smaller to mid-sized uh, commercial operators out here on the canals in Amsterdam. So that'll be your saloon boats up to, you know, up to and including some of the larger uh, canal, what we call the Glasbakke, the big canal ships uh, that take all these tourists around the beautiful canals of Amsterdam. Uh, this guy is very well known and uh, for doing electric conversions. Um, a lot of the newer companies, if they want to 
get into the, a piece of this pie of uh, taking around tourists. They need to get a license, and to get a license by now, a new license always has to be under innovation. Innovation means uh, no emissions um, and or even um, using solar panels uh, as a part of the mix of getting the energy um, generated and definitely having no emissions while um, floating around. We have our next container, um, probably coming you know, two or three weeks from now, it'll be loaded, uh, another six uh, weeks until we have it. So that just didn't cut it for him, and we needed to uh, get this UPS Airbridge thing going again. Well, luckily we have them here. Um, these are ready to go. We had a shipment uh, slightly before, and as I was tooling around Amsterdam this week, I saw one of the boats that some of the earlier 24 had been mounted on. So you will get to see what that looks like. EVTV solar panels. So there you have it, six uh, 180 watt solar panels on the top of a saloon boat here in Amsterdam. Uh, panels with cells made in the States, uh, manufactured in China. Uh, sold on through the states and installed here in Amsterdam. It's a wonderful globalized world, but uh, take away all the <laughs> shipping around. Uh, we're getting these uh, um, clean power generating components out there in the wild, and it's all due to uh, EVTV components being uh, the best and at the best price uh, in this uh, uh, range. Uh, even though there's generally a uh, will match your higher price guarantee, these panels actually are very sharply priced for what they do. Um, the guy installing these, uh, six of these on a boat, so six times 180 watts uh, laid out flat on a boat, non-ideal for mounting. Um, Arjan Koiman, our customer, uh, was getting as much as 1,000 watts continuous, so that's a kilowatt continuous, off of these panels as they were installed flat. Now imagine, here in Amsterdam, we're up in Toronto, okay, uh, as far as you're concerned in um, America. We're up in Toronto, so that's high latitude, longitude, I've never been good with those. <laughs> well, it's up north, guys. We don't get that much of an intense sun, and yet uh, six of these panels uh, out flat, some not even, you know, in the sun, uh, we're producing a continuous thousand watts. So that is a very high efficiency and conversion rate. Uh, for um, anything mounted uh, like that. And uh, the customer was uh, very enthused and uh, is ordering more and will be ordering more still in the future. So these, these things are great. Well, has it all been uh, preparation and me talking and uh, uh, shipping stuff? Not quite. Uh, we're a little further along with the Jeep, uh, as we need to be. Three weeks from today, uh, we'll, uh, from next Monday, we'll have uh, road legal testing. Uh, the Jeep's all put together. That's not because everything under the hood is done, but it's because we'll be uh, sending her out next week uh, to a Jeep specialist. Um, there is a lot of rack and pinion stuff that needs to be done. Uh, she's going to get new brakes. Um, we're you know upping the the uh, weight a little bit and during a part of the road legal testing they're going to do heavy brake testing to check if this you know weight change uh, still leaves the vehicle uh, safe so uh, we need to make sure and you know the brakes were kind of tired already uh, but we need to make sure that uh, they behave properly or all the effort will be for naught and we have to make a very new very expensive um, appointment to get her road legal tested again so rather than uh, um, risk that scenario, we're sending her out to a specialist who also will check her point by point on all the other what we call APK, the, the general road legal uh, uh, testing procedure that doesn't have to do with the electric drivetrain. It's, you know, it's wiring, it's lights, it's uh, um, play in the steering wheel, it's brakes, it's quality of tire. Um, it's making sure that the defroster works. Actually, that's something we did install. So um, I will quickly take you around the Jeep uh, and show you the components that we've been putting in this last week. Here's a Pierberg liquid cooling pump uh, with a custom-made mounting frame. 
or the Raymond did up in the same color as you can see the frame of the Jeep is so we'll be able to mount this nicely under the bonnet and uh, get that hooked up to our motor system here is a type 2 inlet port that we will be using which is needed because we're not allowed to charge with a plug that you can uh, um, that can be reined into and that can't be closed off. She's a slightly bit plastic, but this is what we can get right now. And even though she's a bit of a cheap plastic, 200 euros for this little baby. Come on, guys. It is a piece of plastic. A couple of colors on it. But as volume goes up, prices will go down, we do hope. Of course, we have our trusty Faraz Shawmuth fuses. And uh, I'll take you around the car and uh, show you some of the other components. I'll show you some of the other components. I'll show you some of the other components. So under the hood, we've installed a few more doodads. Uh, here is one of the PTC. Sorry. So there is one of the PTC space heaters. This one is rated for the 300 plus volt range. It's sitting where the original uh, air duct would come along here, and it would be a blower that was heated by uh, uh, engine heat. Now, of course, we're going to be heating electrically, um, even though this is an open car and it's not like you're going to be uh, properly heating your cabin area. It is a road legal requirement that you can defrost your windows. So we do need to have a blower. There's an actually there's an air uh, a sucker <laughs> blower behind there. Then there's the ceramic or the PTC unit and then this little fan at the front and we'll put a little air duct out to the front grill and uh, make sure it gets uh, its air properly. Uh, sitting here is one of our big 1000 watt Chenik blocks um, that will be our DC-DC converter. So it will be getting its high volt from the high volt switching box that will reside over there and it will be giving out its 12 volt to a 12 volt that we will put up there right next to the 12 and 24 volt um, breaker box. This car, being an old military-style Jeep, uh, actually has all of its lights on 24 volts. Yay for us. So we'll be using a 12 to 24 step-up DC-DC uh, uh, converter uh, as we're going from high volt through the DC to 12 volt to 24 and uh, getting it all working that way. So here we have the former uh, gas tank inlet and that will now be housing our type 2 inlet uh, it'll be mounted from the rear and only the little um, cap will stick out the front and you'll be able to open her up and stick in your type 2 charging cable inside the cabin we've mounted our trusty JLD 404 right there and uh, we'll be able to see the amp hours in and out voltages and amps of course and if you can see over there is our um, breaker switch, emergency disconnect switch um, that will use a 12 volt relay to uh, connect to the contactors that can break the high volt battery pack. Also another road legal requirement when it comes to bringing an electric car out on the road here in Holland. What are some of the other things we need to do? We need to have a indication for gear here uh, where the Jeep knob is that's not allowed anymore and also we're going to have a pressure sensor in the seat so that if you leave the car while the controller is enabled and you are in gear you will get a poom, 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 very annoying little noise um, but it's necessary because otherwise she will not be road legal. There's Taz up on her back and uh, now back to me sitting and talking to you week and uh, then next week I'll give you a nice update of what our new digs will look like uh, at the same time hopefully um, we'll have some news um, not so much great news um, some sorry some sad news really on the uh, on the Tesla uh, slash right to repair slash uh, owners rights um, front Kevin Sharp, uh, a EVCON attendee this year uh, and good friend of ours here at EVTV Amsterdam, 
has been a roadster owner and driver and proponent, Tesla proponent and fanboy of the first hour for years and years. Um, he has a Tesla roadster that has done over 50,000 uh, English miles. And um, he has not only purchased that car, taken it around many different ro uh, shows, showing people the, the, uh, the fun of electric driving, um, but he um, also has the extended, very expensive extended uh, warranty on the battery pack. Um, and yet for all that fact, um, he has problems with the battery pack that by Tesla is being deemed as normal degradation. I'll go into it into more detail uh, next week as there's quite a hoo-ha online about this particular case and more like it. But basically, Kevin Sharp has uh, logs of a particular section, uh, uh, brick 8 of 12, I believe, uh, that has been underperforming actually since day one. And you can get logs out of the car and it shows that it was already underperforming before he in fact purchased the car. Uh, Tesla is giving him the cold shoulder though and uh, um, they're not covering it by any ways of warranty while his range is sharply declining and uh, um, it bodes us uh, to worry a little bit. Um, we hope that they'll come around and that maybe it's more of a uh, corporate culture translation, maybe a, you know, a, a limited availability of either new cells or uh, um, available uh, working capacity. We're not quite sure, but anyways, next week we'll go into that into more detail, uh, get you updated on some of our other builds. In the meanwhile, I hope you're all building. We're going to keep building, even if it's just a new warehouse, and uh, I'll see you next week, guys. Take it easy.